Misha Collins, everybody. <laughs> What's going on, sunglasses? What is up, my homies? <laughs> so I was, uh, I, I was just doing a, a live stream, which I'm now continuing, continuing to live stream, uh -huh. just to see um, if we can say something to get ourselves arrested. Oh. Um, but I was live streaming, and then, and I was recording other people, and then I pressed the button to flip it around on yourself, and I saw that I was wearing my sunglasses inside, yeah. which I was not aware of. <laughs> and we didn't say a word about it while you walked down the hall. <laughs> um, I feel super cool right now. Yeah. I was wondering if your live stream was on the beach. <laughs> we didn't know it was inside. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you were an actor, though, with the sunglasses. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just a regular guy. Yeah, I look normal. Otherwise. Um, whoa, 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 whoa! Oh my gosh, it's a ghost <laughs> Um, how is Kings of, how's Kings of Con going? It's going really, really well. We have two more days. We're, we're in the, the thing of it. You don't want to talk about it anymore, do you? No, no it's a weird thing. We're talking about it for the last hour. No, 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 it's more, no, no, it's more than uh, we have not slept. We haven't slept in four weeks. <laughs> um, um, but it's I hear that it's going amazingly. Yeah. I heard some of the stuff that happened, which is, sounds amazing. So yeah. It's, it, we're very excited. Congrats. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's I can't wait for you to see it. Yes, I don't know what you're saying. Neither do I. Ladies and gentlemen, Misha Collins. Okay. <laughs> Guys, you're late. You missed all of the good stuff. We're just wrapping up right now. <laughs> Sorry. How is everyone? Um, someone, someone, uh, a few days ago said that this might might turn out to be the biggest supernatural convention in history. Amazing. Congratulations on being part of a throng of people. It's a great achievement. Um, am I dying? Oh, am I enjoying it? I'm making fun of your accent. Uh, although it did sound like you said, are you dying? Which, when you're on stage in front of a, a huge audience, is not what you want to hear. Are you okay? I, um, I worked on this, uh, it was actually kind of like my first starring role in a movie, and it was an independent feature, um, and it was the first day of shooting, and we did the first take and the first scene, and the director came up to me after the first take and he said, um, Misha, uh, are you okay? <laughs> Which, uh, I don't know if you guys are directors, but that's pretty much not how you're supposed to talk to actors. Like, you're supposed to say things that nudge them in the right direction, but fill them with confidence somehow. And, are you okay? Um, really doesn't serve that function. Um, so, I cried inside, and then we forged on. No, actually, it got even worse from that point. Uh, he said, are you okay? And I was like, oh, I thought I was. <laughs> and then he said, okay, you just seem a little... Mm. And I was like, oh, really? I do? And then, and then he said, okay, well, let's just go again. And I said, oh, Larry, can, can I just have one minute? And he said, sure, 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 sure. Everybody, be quiet. Misha needs a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, that shoot was a fucking train wreck. <laughs> Um, yes, yes, yes. My, uh, 
speaking of which, I, my, a lot of people have been asking how my daughter is and things like that. They're... <laughs> 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 Uh, I did not do that. That was somebody, that was uh, my body double up there. I would never do something like that. Something that crass. Um, yeah, my kids are, um, they're, they're disgusting. <laughs> they have lice. Those of you who I hugged closely in the phone off earlier, you should know that as of yesterday, my children were fully full of lice still. <laughs> Just wanted to let you guys know that. So I did do a fair amount of snuggling, head rubbing with people. Sorry about that. But I just wanted to share my pain. Uh, I learned something amazing about life, which is that men who have gone through puberty, which I fall into the category of, not to brag, uh, don't get lice. Isn't that amazing? Lice hate men's hair. It's amazing. I know. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're the only two people in this room who can't get lice. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they, they, I, I, I posted about this on Facebook, and it was like, uh, it just felt like kind of like one of those train wreck days where everything was going wrong, you know. Um, my daughter had lice and got really sick, and, you know, and my son filled the car with gas tank with water. And, <laughs> And he was, you know, he wasn't totally forthright about it right away. He was like, when the car died, and it died rather dramatically, um, we were exploring the car, and I was like putting on my own, like I used to know how to work on a car. So I was like, you know, popping the hood and checking things out. I'm like, I just cannot figure out. I don't know what would cause this except for, obviously, like something exploding inside the engine, because it was shaking violently and then spitting out plumes of smoke. And, uh, and he said, oh, Dad, do you think maybe, maybe it would have something to do with like what's behind this door? And he pointed to the little, the little flap where the gas is. And I was like, Wes, why would you say that? And he said, I don't know. I, I washed it a little bit with water. I only put in one inch of water. Uh, he's not great with units of measurement. Um, he's like, if I had put in three inches, that would have been bad, but I only put in one inch with the garden hose. And um, so, anyway, that car, that was a while ago. Uh, still in the shop. I may never see it again. Um, but I was, <laughs> I was getting into, we have two cars, and I was getting into the other car because that car was dead. I was getting into the other car, and I was about to turn the ignition, and the thing you don't want to do is run the engine if there's water in the gas tank. I was about to, and I was like, wait a minute, Wes, did you put water in this gas tank too? And he said, no, Dad, I couldn't figure out how to unlock that door. <laughs> um, anyway, yep. I got to Thank you. Thank you. Um, are you just are you saying that because of my my suffering with my kids? <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> it's so strange to have this conversation with someone I can't even see your face. <laughs> I'm blinded by this big white light. I'm just here. I I still don't see you. I though I can vaguely tell that someone stood up. <laughs> and is waving frantically. <laughs> it's as if someone is drowning in the middle of the room. <laughs> my, um, I was telling my, yes, I was telling my daughter that um, she should eat her salad because, you know, that's why her son is, my, my son is so fast, is because he eats a lot of salad, and that's why she's still having a hard time beating him at races. 
Also that she's half the size and wears giant boots, but <laughs> I didn't tell her that. And, and then um, my wife texted me yesterday that, um, that she had said, Mom, I think West, because he eats so much salad, I think he's going to beat Trump. <laughs> Yeah. How yeah. long does it normally take you? How what? How long does it normally take to clean up? Well, um, so we do this little cooking show sometimes, me and, and my son and daughter now, um, where they kind of they take control of the cooking process and they have the ingredients and they pick what we're making and they destroy the kitchen. <laughs> and you're asking how long it takes to clean up. Um, and the truth is, it's never really ever clean. It's never, it's never cleaned up. I'm still finding stuff. We just so we did this baking fast and fresh or something. We we did a baking experiment, which I had the uh, smarts to move from the kitchen to the driveway. So we did the prep work in the driveway. Uh, which, by the way, it's like uh, whatever we made has turned into some kind of mortar that is in between all the bricks. <laughs> and no matter how much it rains, it stays there. But, um, but my <laughs> we made these horrible hockey puck consistency uh, muffins, really rock hard and full of bits of gravel and like probably chicken shit. There's chickens walking around the yard and the kids are stepping in what they're making. By the way, we some lucky winners I mailed out. I mailed out. <laughs> this is the stuff that I'm amazed hasn't ended in a lawsuit yet. So I feel about these muffins to poor people who ostensibly have won something. And, uh, and I did label them in, in, in fairness. I labeled them do not eat. But uh, they're, they're really awful. Anyway, we did that. I don't know when we did that. It was like March or something. And I just saw my daughter two or three days ago, eating one of these hockey pucks. <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck was that all along? <laughs> it must have been in her sock drawer or something. <laughs> she was like, I'm gnawing on it. I thought she was going to break her teeth. It's hot and shake. I was about to tell another story, but I won't, because it's... But it, it, it had to do with, uh, no, no, I'm not going to do it. Okay, thank you. Hi. My question is, why did you become Lucifer? Why did I become Lucifer? Yes. Well, first of all, oh God, this is going to be sort of potentially kind of devastating for you. So I'm not an actor. <laughs> <laughs> How old is the kid? If at the end of this to get a refund or something, I'm sure that we can talk about it. I am not Castiel. I just portray him on, on a TV show. That TV show, plug your ears if you don't want a major spoiler, is a work of fiction. Um, but but um, I, I'm going to just go out on a limb and assume that you're asking about my character. Kind of? Or are you saying that I am Satan? <laughs> She's just stone-facedly staring me down. She's not gonna step in my trap. <laughs> um, I, Castiel, Castiel became Lucifer because he, he had some conflicted emotions, I think, at that point. One, he wanted to help um, save the world, um, and he thought that Lucifer would give us a leg up uh, in that fight. And the other thing is that I think at that point in Cass's career, he felt like a total loser. Um, he felt bad about himself. He felt like he had been uh, a failure and that he had done things that had led to um, major catastrophes. And I 
think that there was a little part of him that was kind of throwing himself on the grenade, like kind of sacrificing himself for what he perceived to be the greater good. But I think that there was two things going on there. One was genuinely just trying to fix the problem, and the other was like a little bit of self-destructive, self-loathing sacrifice. What do you think? I don't know. That's why I asked you. Fair enough. It's not my stupid show. How's the, so we're live streaming right now. How's it going? Hi, guys. Did Mackenzie make a comment from the front row? No? All right. You're amazing. I'm going to hang up on the live streamers. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm going to run out of battery, so I'll see you later. Bye. Say goodbye, but say it with feeling. Bye. Um, did you all sign the waiver? <laughs> sure. Yeah, I got you. You were like, waiver? <laughs> waiver? No, I didn't get one of those. It's not fair. Um, hi. Hi. How are you? Amazing. Not a wafer. A waiver. <laughs> Somebody said that you were handing out wafers earlier. <laughs> Um, we're going to start doing communion at <laughs> Supernatural Conventions. Um, just to be clear, we don't think of ourselves as a cult, it's a religion. <laughs> so we can get tax exempt status. Um, we're, we're buying up a fleet of, of naval vessels that we will be spending some time on. Um, hi. <laughs> I'm sorry to leave you hanging like that. That was rude. That's okay. I would stand here all day. <laughs> Wait, you're here what? I said I would stand here all day. It's fine. You would stand there all day? Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> Did you say jerk? <laughs> no wafer for you, young lady. <laughs> <coughs> We were wondering what your favorite <coughs> cast to play. Cassifer, Leviathan. <laughs> I could stand here all day. <laughs> um, who's, when you say we, are you, is that like the royal we? Oh. oh, my daughter. Oh, okay. Who stands at a respectful distance? <laughs> <laughs> What's they that? Wouldn't, they wouldn't let her come up here. Oh, really? Why? Because uh, they're afraid that you guys would talk over each other or something? What are our rules now? One at a time. One at a time? Yeah. What if you're related? It was Do you get an exemption right here. And... I'm glad that they kept you back there. No, no, <laughs> don't, let her, don't you let her come close to the microphone. I don't trust her because she's wearing a crown. It says free will on it. Team free will. Yeah, that's not part of our cult. <laughs> no way for, for her either. Um, why don't you come up to the microphone? Hi. You're breaking the creation rules right now. Really? <laughs> Big trouble. Um, so, what is your, do you have a favorite, um, do you have favorite versions of all of the characters on the show? Or any of the characters? I, I do. I don't know if he does. Okay. I can see why they wanted to separate you two. <laughs> You're fighting already. Um, what, what are your favorites? Casper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know you wanted to play him for a while, so I'm like, fine with that too. Okay. All right. You do you watch the show? Yeah. What do you what 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 characters do you like? Um, Blake was my favorite. Who's your favorite character on the show? You. Yes. <laughs> you get two wafers. <laughs> I really need to get some wafers. <laughs> this could be a real currency here. Um, <laughs> 
I really did enjoy um, playing Cassifer last season. That was awesome. It was just a lot of fun to get to do something totally different. Um, and I love that the, the writers really gave me kind of a lot, put a lot of meat on the bones of that character and gave me a lot to play with, so I had a lot of fun with that. Um, yeah, it was good. I kind of got, uh, it, it, it was fun to just play something so wildly different from Cass. Um, I had started to wonder whether I could do anything other than Cass. Um, <laughs> I was afraid that I had broken myself as an actor, <laughs> and that I would only be able to stand as a slouched, stiff-armed, uh, monotone, gravel-voiced, uh, socially awkward angel. Um, so yeah, thanks for asking. Thank you. Um, <laughs> what? Stop, Cass. Harassment? Stop making his life a living hell. I love that there's like protest. Like, for God's sake, stand up for my fictitious character. He's been through enough shitty fictitious situations. <laughs> Cass's life sucks. <laughs> Um, you, you gotta wait for a young woman. Thank you for that protest. Um, yeah, um, Cass has been through the ringer, my poor guy. Um, but it was nice having him locked away for a little while so I could play Lucifer, so from an actor's standpoint, it's fun having him sub subdued for a little while. Um, although I'm excited to, I'm excited to have him back for this season. I'm, we're starting shooting on Tuesday. For season one dozen. Yeah. It's totally amazing to think that it's come to that. Um, they must just not have any new shows. <laughs> trying to make a new show, uh, we can't find anything at all. Let's just do Supernatural again, I guess. <laughs> um, I don't think those guys are up to anything else. So. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty bizarre. How many, how, how uh, let's do a little poll. Do we have house lights in here? Wow, it's amazing how it just happens. Um, by a show of hands that I can't see. <laughs> um, how many of you have been watching Supernatural for 11 years? Yeah. Like really, now I don't, hold on, hold, put your hands up. Because I think that there's some of you who are lying. Um, how many of you have been watching, not just have watched all 11 seasons, but have actually watched from when they started airing 11 years ago? Oh, come on, you were five years old. <laughs> really? She's lying about her age. So you're saying you're 22? 21, all right. Um, because we do meet a lot of people who are like 15 or 16, and there's no way they were watching it when they were four. Or if they had been, they would now be full-blown serial killers. <laughs> um, I like it. So that's actually quite a lot of people that have been watching the show for 11 years. Who has binged and caught up in the show in the last three years? Wow. So the, the, the more vocal majority are people who are the bingers. Um, that's interesting. Good to know. Um, yeah, it's, 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 like a, it's a really long time for a show, a TV show. That, um, be on the air. So you were 11 years old when you started watching, in my opinion, a little young. <laughs> um, but that means, quite literally, you grew up with Supernatural. Like, you watched us go from being relatively fit and youthful, which is what we are now. <laughs> um, that's amazing. Wow. Have you watched other shows for that long? You have? 
do you just watch TV on the TV? That's what you do. <laughs> um, what other shows? What has been on for that long? Like, Grey's Anatomy and, and CIS? Do you watch those shows? No. So you're locked. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. Jensen was on Days of Our Lives. Do you watch Days of Our Lives? Is it still on? My goodness. They're canceling it? Wow. Um, well, there's, yeah, there's a few shows out there that, are, that have that kind of uh, staying power. And you're making me feel insignificant by being like, yeah, watch all kinds of shows that go for 12 seasons. Why do you think it's such a big deal? Um, but it feels like a big deal to me, okay? Um, by show of hands, since we have house lights, how many of you have two hands? Uh, um, how many of you have been to a supernatural convention before? No way. How many have not been to a supernatural? Oh I don't think I've ever been in a room with so many virgins. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. Um, well, to the vast majority of you, I mean, I think that's like 75 or 80 percent of you have not done this before. So you have no idea what you're getting into. Oh, this is going to be a total fiasco for you. <laughs> Um, how's it going so far for those of you who are here? Yeah! Right? That's great to hear. Um, oh, so we can, that's, I wish I had asked that in the beginning. I'd be recycling all of my old jokes. <laughs> okay. I don't have any jokes. Uh, what is your question, young woman? Hi. Hi. So my question is to do with your character, Cass. Yes. So, especially this season, he's been very beaten down and feeling very vulnerable. But I was hoping with his little pep talk from Dee, calling him a brother, are we going to get to see Cass kind of feeling better and maybe they'll actually take care of him better and be nicer to him next season? <laughs> and being what? Being nicer to Cass. Um, yes, this is what we're, they're actually colloquially terming this uh, season, the chicken soup season. So, uh, we're, the, ca the cast is basically, all, like, all the characters are going to spend a lot of time, you know, Netflix and chilling with each other, like, wrap up in blankets, doing microwave popcorn, um, checking each other for lice, you know. <laughs> It's going to be a very sweet, very intimate, very cuddly season, uh, and I think it's going to just blow your mind. You guys are going to be, <laughs> you know, you never, you never hear that on the PR circuit, like actors talking about their show. Yeah, it's always you have to kind of toe the party line. It's always going to be like, yeah, the season is going to, they're going to blow it out of the water. It's going to be amazing. We have action sequences, and you wouldn't believe, you know, skyscrapers crashing into barges, and I don't know. That's not a great example. <laughs> <laughs> And um, you never hear them being like, you know what, this season, pretty much nothing is going to happen. It's going to be total, like, a lot of reading. The characters are going to be reading a lot on camera. No, we don't do, we're not actors. Oh, we've not revealed that before, but yeah, no, we are not professional actors on Supernatural. Um, it was actually originally supposed to be a reality series. <laughs> and they shot the first episode and they, they thought we were so awkward on camera improvising lines that they gave us scripts and that's how it evolved to be what it is today. So it's a sort of a reality show gone wrong. But thanks for asking. Um, so yeah, um, as a matter of fact, I think Cass is going to be feeling a little bit better, better about himself in some respects, um, although there's certainly an undercurrent of self-loathing that you know, is a through line. But he is, is going to be getting, I think, back to more of sort of that like action hero cast from season four, where he's like... <laughs> which I'm kind of excited about. Like, there, you know, we've got some scenes where he, Yeah, I'm not going to tell you because I'm not supposed to, so... Uh, yes. And thank you. Hi. Hi. 
So I first want to say that I'm sorry that my sister and I made you wear the bride Mickey ears. That was supposed to be for Mark. <laughs> Mark? Mark Shepard was supposed to wear the bride Mickey yes, ear hat? Yes. So the, uh, in a photo op, I don't know how many of you have done photo ops yet or not. Um, because we're, you know, we are professional actors who have integrity and mountains of self-respect. Um, the way we, in, in the Supernatural cast, do our photo ops is very serious. Um, we generally don't make physical contact of any kind with the fans who come take pictures with us. And we certainly do not wear Mickey Mouse bridal hats during the... Um, That's okay. I'm okay with it. I have... I believe I've been even pied in the face during photo ops. Really? Voluntarily. I can't be serious. Um, there's pretty much nothing, like, every once in a while, Jensen and I will look at each other, like, we'll do a little check-in, like, during a duo photo op, like, really, are we gonna go there? And we're always like, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and people come up, they'll have drawings, you know, of what they want us to do. Would you terribly mind riding Jared like a horse? Um, <laughs> And I'm standing in the background pretending to pee on you or whatever. And we'll be like, okay. Um, because we're you know, professional actors with heaps of integrity and self-respect. And um, But Mark Shepard, he will not put a prop on his head no matter what. I assume it's because he must have head lice. He must be one of those, he must be one of those outliers, the men who, who can carry lice because he doesn't want to infect anyone's hat. Um, but if anyone has like devil horns or something like that that they want Mark to wear, you can forget it. He's not gonna wear your horns. I'm breaking the news to you now since you've not been here It was before. quite funny. Um, but I, you, he was gonna wear the, the bridal hat yeah, and I was gonna... It didn't pan out that way, did it? No, it's okay. yeah, that was me. <laughs> um, it's very fitting. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so my question is... Oh, that wasn't your question! <laughs> I thought you stood in line just to apologize for the hat. <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry to let you That's right. Um, so my question is actually thought of by my sister. Um, she has red hair. Hi. <laughs> uh, standing at an even more respectful distance. <laughs> uh, she wants to know, if you could be any dessert, what would you be? Good question. I mean, we all know what Cass would be, but we want to know what Misha would be. This is a very serious question. Man, this is tough. This... People are suggesting pie, but I'm not going to fall for that trap. Um, we know what Cass is, we just want to know what Misha is. Yeah. Um, what? No. No. What? Wafer. Wafer is a good answer. Thank you. Thank you for answering my question for me. I would be a wafer. <laughs> With a cherry on top. So that when you bit into me, it would pop your cherry. Damn. I knew I was I actually, the minute you started asking that question, I was like, I'm gonna cross the line, I'm gonna cross the line. Don't, 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 don't answer this question. Okay, go. Save me from myself. I'll do my best. So, I was wondering if, given the circumstances that you directed under last time, if given the opportunity, would you go there again? Would I direct again on yeah. Supernatural? Well, that was a truly traumatic experience. <laughs> it was just, it like. um, yes, I, I think I would. Um, I have been, um, I haven't been angling for another episode lately. Because I feel so busy, and it takes so much work to direct an episode. Um, it's really, it's really like ten days before, then the shoot, 
you had another like four or five days afterwards. So it's a it's a very it's a big commitment, and to do that during the shooting season is is challenging with all of the convention travel and whatnot. It's a little bit tricky for me because um, it would be like a voluntary additional thing to do, but, um, and my wife already hates me. <laughs> um, and my children don't remember what I look like, so. Aww. But but these people love me, so. <laughs> so I don't need I don't need them. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. I mean, ideally, of course, it would be an animated episode that um, the physical presence of, for example, Jared Adelaide and Jensen Ackles wouldn't be needed for the episode. Um, <laughs> Or we could do maybe an episode as simply an audio podcast. That would be amazing. Um, which could be recorded from remote studios. I would love that. All right. Yeah. Uh, thanks for asking. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Misha. Um, I'm Megan. My question was, how can you be such a social butterfly and like not be afraid, other than the fact that you're a celebrity and a lot of people talk to you and whatnot, but how do you have no fear? <laughs> I'm terrified right now. Um, so what, do you, what do you mean? What do you mean? Like you, you so you uh, do you do you get nervous talking in front of people? Yes, yeah? I have very bad social anxiety, and I just want to know how like how you say yes to all these experiences that you do, and like, not be afraid, like tips basically. Um, I'm tempted to like pull you up on stage and make you sit up here for the next half an hour, but I won't do that because I'm not that cruel. Um, but just so you know, that, that that impulse is there, alive in me. <laughs> Full disclosure. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it's funny, I, uh, I actually am definitely an introvert. Like, I've done these like, personality tests, and I am all the way all the way, like needle in the red on the introvert end of the spectrum. Like given the opportunity to hang out with somebody who go have dinner or go stare at the wall by myself, I definitely pick stare at the wall by myself. Yeah. Um, and I also am kind of shy in a lot of situations. Um, I, have my, I have a younger brother um, who I used to always be so enamored of because he would just talk to strangers. And I was like, terrified of people, um, but I think that I think that if you're if you're sort of thrust into a situation where you just kind of have to confront a fear, it seems to dissipate somewhat. Um, I mean, I still get like I still get nervous, you know, a little bit coming up on stage, but I've done it so much now that a lot of that anxiety is gone. Um, but the first time I came like, to do a convention, I was like. They want me to come do a convention, and part of the thing is going to be a panel. And I was like, all right, that sounds fine. I, you know, you hear panel. Everybody knows what a panel is. It's a few tables lined up, maybe eight or ten people sitting up doing a panel together. You know, maybe I'd have to field one question, but it would be fine. And I got backstage, and I realized, oh, it's just between me, and there's no table. <laughs> and no, I'm going to just have to talk. I was, like, terrified. Um, but somehow, I don't know, somehow I've been, I have a little bit worked through that anxiety over time, but I actually think that just pushing yourself up against that, that thing that you have fear of or resistance to, um, like once you do it a few times, it kind of starts to go away. Um, there's a, there's a, I think a, a lot of fear is related to uncertainty, so not knowing how something is going to go or what the outcome is going to be is something that gives us anxiety. But once you do something a, a number of times and you start to see, all right, I get, I get how this is going to unfold, it becomes less scary. Um, I remember when I was, how old are you? Oh, I'm 17. When I was 18, my girlfriend at the time and wife now, um, we decided that we were going to start a sleepaway summer camp for underprivileged urban teens. And it was a totally harebrained idea for people who had no idea what they were doing. And we had to raise, and we decided that we were going to do that in the spring, and it was for that summer. So we just had like 
six weeks to put this thing together, and we needed to raise a lot of money. And so we just started going door to door. And my wife was totally fearless. And we decided, we went, like we went to, we drove to a rich neighborhood, and we split up. She went one way, and I went the other way. And she just, and I saw her, like, just walk right up, knock on the door, and they opened the door, invited her into the house, shut the door, and she was gone. <laughs> And I was petrified. I was just sitting there. I remember I, I approached somebody's, like, I walked uh, down the, the walkway to their steps, and then I walked back again, and then I did it again, and then I sat under the tree in their yard, and I was like, my heart was pounding, and I was just working up the courage to go knock on the door. And then when I finally did, like, I just was like, I gotta do it, I gotta do it. I knocked on the door, and I was so nervous that they were like, sure, we'll, we'll give you whatever you want. Like, this poor kid looks like he's gonna faint on us. Um, and they gave me like $25, and it was just like that, that first thing broke the ice, and the next one was a little bit less scary, and then after a while, I was like, this is fun. Like, I'm, I was having a great time, and people were like totally into it, because we were into it. Um, we ended up raising like, all the money we needed, just knocking door to door on random, admittedly in rich people's neighborhoods, but. Um, and we kind of lied. We were like, we live nearby, which we didn't. So they felt like we were neighbors, but it was for a good cause. Um, anyway, that's just a little story about like pushing through. I think when you push through the fear, it gets easier, but it's, I think everything is scary at first. And you're young, you're only 17. You have your whole life to be terrified of. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Hi. Hi. First off, I just want you to know that you're my three-year-old son, Hunter's favorite character on the show. Yes, he's three and he watches you. <laughs> <laughs> he likes Supernatural better than Barney. I, I can't help it. <laughs> you're going to find... Do you have any uh, animals? <laughs> You're gonna find your five-year-old son with like the severed head of the neighbor's dog at some point. And he's gonna be like, look, mom, I learned it from Supernatural. I think he was possessed. <laughs> so I, I cut him up with my demon knife, but, which is um, your red knife. <laughs> anyway. I wanted to ask, what was your most embarrassing or most memorable time on a fantasy? Out of convention, like on the streets or in public. Did you say fantasy? <laughs> What's my most embarrassing fantasy? <laughs> There's a weird echo in here, so I'm not sure. Fan experience, like that. Fan experience. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't have to reveal well, that. that yeah. um, <laughs> I just dodged a bullet. I'm curious um, to what his answer would be. My, my <laughs> most strange fan experience. I like them recognizing. Uh, what's that? Them recognizing you. Of them recognizing me? Um, oh, that's a great question. Um, I don't know. I, I, I was... Um, I was recently at this... Um, this oh, it was awful. <laughs> I was at this um, like family-style... Um, dining experience, and it was really, it was long, it was like three hours long, and I happened to be seated next to a bunch of people who were clearly, like, really big fans of the show, and it was pure coincidence, and they were so excited, but they didn't, they wouldn't admit the whole time that they were fans, or they knew who I was, and it was, like, the, actually, amazingly, one of the most awkward experiences of my life. Like, there was this guy sitting next to me, he's like, yeah, dude, so, so what do you like to drink, man? Hey, hey, uh, you like, you like doing selfies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's awesome. Let's do that all night long. Um, but pretend that we're just buddies who are doing selfies together that just met. Um, there are certainly weird experiences that happen from people recognizing you. Um, I think part, sometimes the, there, there are, I think the strangest experiences are when people have like a little synaptic break where they think that because they know, recognize me, that I also know them. <laughs> and sorry to shatter anybody's illusions if that's how you think it works, but the TV is a unidirectional device. <laughs> So, a lot of times, people will be like, Oh my god, 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 o
God, it's so good to see you. I, like, I missed you. And you're like, wait, but I've never met you before. Um, so that can be awkward at times. Um, but generally speaking, it's, it's mostly lovely experiences, I would say. The vast, vast majority of experiences um, with people who know the show are actually quite nice and, and lovely. Um, sometimes I take more photos than I wish I would, but you know that's that comes with the territory. I think that we like 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 to find things to complain about. So like actors who are struggling are like, oh, nobody recognizes me, and then as soon as people start recognizing me, they're like, oh, everybody recognizes me. Um, <laughs> there's no middle ground. I was at uh, the zoo in D.C. I brought my son to the Washington D.C. convention, and we went to the zoo. And uh, and for some reason there were lots of people there who were taking asking to take pictures, and he did not handle it well. He was a little prima donna asshole. He was, like, <laughs> he was like, oh, great, another photo. Yeah, great, just what I want. Like <laughs> right in their faces. I was like, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. And then he, of course, like jumped me into the photo at the last minute. <laughs> um, Thank you. Hi. Hi, Misha. I was wondering if you would comment on all of the kind parents that have brought their kids here to see Supernatural Comics. Yes! Yes, I would comment on them. First of all, you are wonderful parents who have brought your children here. Especially those of you who have children who are over the age of three who watch Supernatural. <laughs> And furthermore, those of you who are children here, I'm sorry about some of the words that I have said <laughs> earlier. My bad. I, are you trying to rein me in? Was that what, what that comment no, was No, not about? at all. Um, I try not to uh, swear around my own children because they take it as license to swear themselves and they, they use that language too much and they they apply it, they, they, they use it liberally um, and it's not good sometimes. Like we went to visit a school. <laughs> they do not like it when you're a prospective kindergartner. He was calling a kindergarten teacher. Or better words. <laughs> Me and my wife laughed. <laughs> Which further did not ingratiate us. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're, those of you, and I, I don't know that you're a parent or anything, but those of you who are parents, uh, who brought your children here, are truly the best parents out there. I am not a parent, but I... You're not? Ah, oh, damn it, I wasted that. I was all you. <laughs> but I would also like to say thanks for all the spouses that have come to support the people that love Woo! Supernatural. Wow, this is like a real love fest all of a sudden. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to the bus drivers that drove the people here. <laughs> who aren't here, but who are out there driving buses somewhere, making this possible. Uber, yeah. Um, how many, um, how many of you people um, have participated in, in Gishwiz? How many of those of you who have done it before are going to do it again? Good, that's good. Those of you who haven't signed up, well, those of you who have signed up, I'll just persuade one person here to sign up while you're here for the weekend. I think it's great. You'll love it. You'll have fun. We get a wafer at the end, so <laughs> it's worth it. That's it's like it's price. happening in just a couple weeks. It's a lot of fun. It's the week of my birthday. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning that because I was just talking to a mother and a daughter who bonded greatly over the experience. But you are neither a parent nor a daughter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I hate it when stand-up comedians laugh at their own jokes. So I try not to laugh at my own, but sometimes I say things that are funny and then I have to laugh. 
Um, what, do you have anything else that you wanted to say, or was that just a no. thank you to the parents for, for having children? Yeah, I just met some really wonderful parents here, and I just wanted them oh, to... Oh, so you're trying to suck up to somebody right yeah, now. Yeah, right? basically. Great. Uh, well, well played. <laughs> um, she just met some very wealthy parents. And... Hi. Sorry that I'm gonna start crying again. <laughs> but my question is, what's the best way to step out further from my comfort zone? Goodness. Well, probably a good step would be asking a question in front of 2,000 people. <laughs> That's pretty uncomfortable for me. Um, you have to do a way better high five than that, but it's kept us in force. Yes, much better. Um, when you're standing in, in line getting ready to ask a question, do you get like nervous? I would get so nervous. Do you? You're shaking a little bit, so yes. Okay. Um, also because like it's that thing that I was talking about, the fear a little bit of the unknown. And you never know sometimes like I could bring you up on stage and, you know, do your hair or something like that. <laughs> and that would be catastrophic for, for a lot of people. So um, although you you probably would braid well. Um, <laughs> you I think that you're off to a very good start. I think that um, probably just Talking about it openly is a good way to get out of your comfort zone. But I think, wouldn't you agree that getting out of your comfort zone is kind of the best way to like learn and grow? I think it's great. I think. Um, I'm one of those people that um, that I, I used to write my journal. I, I was recently going through my journals from high school and college, and I would write these things that were totally insane. They were insane. They were the ramblings of a crazy person. It was like, from now on, I I'm only going to sleep two hours a day. <laughs> and I'd write down these very firm edicts for self-improvement about myself. And, and none of them ever materialized. But there was one kind of through line, which is that I was always like trying, I was always trying to push myself to do something. Um, I, I bored her. Um, but, um, I think that that's where what, one of the things that I wrote though, it, like one, at one point was uh, it was like right around the New Year, and it said, "This year, I'm going to do one thing that terrifies me every day." That is not a good idea. <laughs> you don't have to do that to get out of your comfort zone. Um, but it is interesting, I think, to notice where you have internal resistance about things. Like there are times when you just don't do something, not because you're terrified of it, just because it's just outside of your comfort zone. It's like you have resistance, and so you stop, and you don't even really know why. But it's like because you're you're sort of breaking out of a habit that you have formed without even realizing that you've formed that habit. And I think, it, and I, I personally think that those moments when you can push through that, you don't have to terrify yourself, but just notice why why not do this new weird thing? Why not go up and ask a question in front of two thousand people of a of a weirdo who's probably going to try to embarrass me? <laughs> Why not? Maybe something good will come up. Thank you. Yeah.
Okay, so injure, kiss, and marry. Oh, this is like the PG-13 yeah, version. Yeah, that's what I was told Mary to say. Marry, fuck, kill. <laughs> so one of them you're going to hold hands with. One, one you're going to hold hands with. The other one you're just going to look away angrily. <laughs> and the other one you will win. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, so Jared Padalecki, Jensen Ackles, and Mark Shepard. <laughs> Duh. Duh. That's like pretty obvious. Rob, 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 <laughs> they're playing, playing hand hold, shut, wet. It's the uh, PG version of F. Mary Kill. Yeah. Do you have, uh, for those three, do you have a very clear. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're not, I think that, right? You know. Let's no, not, yeah. not lie to each other. We, we all know who we would marry, who we would. Who we would, <laughs> who we would we're not, we're not going to say, but that's your right answer. Though. There is a correct answer. <laughs> you, spend, you spend a few days with those guys, and it becomes crystal clear. <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> we're laughing because it's so true. We all know which one of those guys we want to bang. <laughs> we all know. We all know which one we would like to see. You know, we like, we like to off. Offed, yeah. And, and, and we, we all go like right, right, right around the house. <laughs> but can you specify forever? Nope. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? <laughs> no. Mark Shepard, <laughs> and then kill him. And marry his dead body. Are we, um, <laughs> are we gonna have one more question, one last question, or was that the last question? Go, oh, come on, get up there, ask a question. Oh my gosh, thank you. Okay, so, yes. my question is, yes. why do you think Jimmy Novak's body didn't disintegrate under the power of containing Lucifer as his vessel, since Jimmy wasn't a true vessel? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. Appreciate that. You a pretty great panel. Oh, you know what? That had a hurt going down. I feel like this is one of those questions you should just turn over to Mike Borja. Mike has <laughs> Mike? Okay, Mike, fill us in here. As you know, Jimmy Novak, Castiel's original vessel. Jenny Novak, Castiel's original vessel. Same thing, whatever. And then, obviously, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, oil was just up here. Anyway, why didn't why didn't why didn't Lucifer why didn't Lucifer blow up the cat? Why did why didn't why didn't the best get? I got it. What was the question? Why didn't so why didn't when Lucifer occupied the vessel that was the now obviously deceased but formerly Castiel's vessel, Jimmy Novak, when, when he occupied that vessel, why didn't the vessel itself explode? Uh, right? Right. Because obviously... The answer is blue. Yes. 